Dearly beloved of the Lord, welcome and we praise God for this, another opportunity in finding God and he gives us all opportunity, access to the throne of grace and we thank God for this moment again. There are portions of scripture that we read and they encourage us variously and we remain encouraged to continue even searching for more of these scriptures. And so in finding God, may God bless you as you listen to this. We are going with the, we are continuing with the journey of the Israelites and there's a portion of scripture that I found interesting and informative about some family issues and um, how God prepares his people for their future. Now, there is a man in the Bible called Zerophehad. It's one of the harder names to pronounce. But this man, Zerophehad, is found in Numbers chapter 27. Numbers chapter 27, I just want to read a few verses to set us off. And this is what the Bible says. That then, then drew near the daughters of Zerophehad, the sons of, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, from the clans of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. The names of the daughters are given. And these were Machila, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tiruza. And they stood before Moses and before Eliezer, the priest, and before the chiefs and all the congregation at the entrance of the tent of meeting, saying, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among the company of those who gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died for his own sin. And he had no sons. Why should the name of our father, this is the question in verse 4, why should the name of our father be taken away from him, from his clan, because he had no son? Give to us a possession among our father's brothers. Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses in verse 6, in verse 7, the daughters of Zerophehad are right. Can you imagine God saying, the daughters of Zerophehad are right. You shall give the, them possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers and transfer the inheritance of their father to them. And you shall speak to the people of Israel, saying, if a man dies and has no son, then you shall transfer his inheritance to his daughter. And if he has no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brothers. Now listen, this is something that informs our understanding. My interest is lying in the two, in these five girls, five daughters of this man, Zelophehad. Five girls, Mahla, and the meaning of Mahla is forgiven. Noah, the meaning of Noah means movement. The other name is Hogla. Hogla means cycling or dancing. You know, when someone is dancing, there's the, the circles that someone makes, that is a Hogla. Milka refers to queen and Tiruza is pleasing, favorable. And um, this portion of scripture is a wonderful story. Daughters of Zerophehad testifying to the fact that there were several challenges that we manifest. At that time, in the culture of the Hebrews, in the culture of the Jews, it was boy children. The reason why, by the way, um, who had 12 sons? Joseph, I mean Jacob. 
and uh, but did he have daughters? Yes, there was some daughters, but one of them that stands out is called uh, uh, Dina. You know, there are there are girls who are not really mentioned very very loudly. Now, these girls show us what they did in order to claim for their right of inheritance, inheritance of the land, inheritance of property. Actually, the girls come forward to ask for their share. Pray the Lord for their share because we have just read the scripture here telling us that actually they had it. this man died for his own sin and uh, they are also talking about other people like the sons of Korah, Korah and his other people who disobeyed God and God opened the ground and they were swallowed and so they say Korah died for his sins that our father was not among those that died with Korah but now they are mentioning that he died for his own sin. But listen, that he had no son. And according to the allocations, the allotment of the land in chapter 26, this same book of Numbers, chapter 26, they allotted the land, they allotted the portions. And they, I mean, they, they, they took a census. The census was for purposes of allotment when they reached Canaan. And now the census didn't have, have them counted among the tribes, counted among the clans that were going to inherit the land when the allotment was, would eventually be done when they reached Canaan. And so, Zerophah had, had no sons, but daughters only. And uh, in chapter 26, still they talk about him, how he had no son, chapter 26, verse 33, and chapter 53, God instructed Moses, to handle this situation. And so the land, the land was apportioned according to the number of the names. The census that took place in the book of Numbers. By the way, why this book is called Numbers is because actually they numbered the people, the census, they were actually preparing. And so preparation beforehand is good. Preparation for anything before you get into it is good. Is it an exam? You prepare beforehand is good. Parents preparing for their children beforehand is good. And even preparing for an interview. Are you going to have an interview? Preparing beforehand is good. So preparation is very, very important. I have ever said, and I've taken note of the six P's here, and I've ever mentioned it somewhere, I say it again. Prior proper preparations prevents poor performance. Six P's. Prior proper preparation prevents poor performance. Now here, it's because this thing was being done beforehand that these daughters realized that they're not counted. And so they rose up in chapter 27 and went to Moses and said, look, despite the fact that actually it's only the males that should be listed, we're also here. Our father had no son, but we are here, the daughters. So they came to the tent of meeting and presented their case to the elders. The reason why chapter 27 brings them out, they came forward and demanded for what was due for them. And so they raised a case here, girl child right and obligation in the inheritance of property. And of course, it has been a debate raging over centuries, over decades, over thousands of years. And now these ones are thousands of years since it happened. And currently, presently, people talk about inheritance, inheritance. And when someone takes property and gives to the girl child, his daughter, to be the inheritor, to be the heir, some people raise up and say, why should he do that? But this is a child. And so daughters of Zerophehad give us a very big lesson to pick from the five daughters. And so they were concerned that their father's name would be lost. I like their point. And it's very, very informative that we need to be concerned with the name of the family. If you belong to the family, 
ensure that the name of your father, the, your name should not be lost. And of course, as Africans, we have this very, very entrenched in the tradition. We are Christians, but African or something like that. It, and actually even the other cultures. And so you continue, it's for purposes of continuity that the father's name could not be lost. This leaves us a huge lesson, you and I, that as we live our life, as we get the children, now, is there favoritism in terms of these boys, these girls? Is there any trouble? But African culture also has trouble with this, that actually may, years back, people would not regard the girls as children because they would talk about the air, 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 the musica. That is what they, what they say. But the point is, these girls give us a huge lesson. Now, one of the things that, that you may wish to learn from this story is that these girls, the daughters of Zerophehad, were real women. They challenged the beliefs and practices of their day. And indeed, they challenge the beliefs and practices of our day as well. Assertiveness and faith is the point in this male-dominated society. Many times it has been harsh to some gender, the girl child. And so these girls leave us a challenge. If it ever happens in our culture, if it ever happens in our families, there are some boys who raise up against the girls. There are some clans which raise up against the daughters and they grab their land, they grab their property, that actually your girls go and get married and leave us here with your father's property. Now, Zero for Hadi's daughters give us a lesson here. That actually is something that actually we need to pick up very, very much. And it is important. And so I took very keen interest in this story of Zerophah had his daughters. And before God, they were right. Remember the Bible was saying, God told Moses, these girls are right. Can you imagine? God is the father of all. He's the father of the male and the female. He's the father of the young and old. He's the father of everyone. Because all of us pronounce him our father who art in heaven. Many do that, women do that, children do that, adults do that, our father who art in heaven. So zero of had his daughters give us a challenge, leave it to you, leave it to me. And so that we can have um, a way, equitable way of dealing with our society. Now, one other lesson that actually we pick from these girls is that after the death of their father. You know, the parents are the security of their children, and I like that. The parents are the security of their children. Now, their father dies, and they remain there. The situation is gloomy. The situation is unpredictable. The reason why they rise up by themselves and say, no, we must go. So never allow to be overwhelmed by the situation. I've learned from them. That even when you seem lonely, even when you seem, the, when, even when the circumstances seem to be all against you, I learn not to be overwhelmed by the prevailing situation. Their father died and they were lonely, but they rose up and went to Moses and said, Muse, prophet, judge, here is a situation, we need our inheritance. And God was on their side. So never be overwhelmed by the situation. There actually other people, when you get overwhelmed by the situation, other people will take advantage. If these girls were over, got overwhelmed by the situation and they sat back, this story would have been written here. But it is written here because they rose up and they spoke up for themselves. So they got the right words to put to Moses and God said they are right. So I pray for you, I pray for everyone that we get the right words to deal with our situations that overwhelm us and 
we shall get what is due to us. Now listen to me, that even in the New Testament, there is a man who was blind. This man was called Bartimaeus, the blind man. And the Bible says that actually when Jesus was passing by, he said, son of David, have mercy on me. And people scolded him, keep quiet. But the Bible said actually the more they scolded him, the more he shouted. And there are moments when you have to speak up. Confidently but respectfully. And these girls were confident, they were respectful, they went. And so don't lose the point because you are harsh, because you are disrespectful. And people do it very much in disrespectful way to argue their point. But these girls argued their point respectfully. And so when you do that, you'll attract God's attention. You'll attract help that be from whichever corner, but God will see you. Somebody will rise up and come to your attention. These girls spoke it up and God raised the voice when he spoke to Moses, says these girls are right. And listen to me, that their voice was heard and they got their inheritance. And so speak up respectfully though, confidently though, but respectfully, like Bartimaeus did, and he received his healing, praise the Lord. He received his healing because he spoke up despite the voices. And sometimes the voices will come, There's sometimes many things will happen, but God gives you the courage, God gives you the confidence, respectfully though, that actually you attain what is due you. Now, one thing that can may seem little, but I like the courage that this girl has had. When you discover that your destiny is hanging in balance, what do you do? Courage is your best ally. And I've discovered that this in my own life. I've discovered this in my own situations. In my ministry, the moments when you get discouraged, many things um, go wrong and you find yourself downcast. But the moment you pick up yourself and courage becomes your best ally, you rise up and you conquer eventually. And the people will eventually see the truth and you succeed. This girls gives me a huge lesson. And you know, we read about another story in the Bible, read about Zacchaeus. He was losing out because of his height. He was losing out because, but he was not discouraged at all. He took courage, a rich man, but the Bible said that he ran and ran ahead and climbed the scamo tree and was able to see and meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, friend, I encourage you, as I encourage myself at the same time, that may courage be your best ally. Now, one other thing that, that I find from these girls is that they are focused. Sometimes we lose focus along the way. Focused on securing their future friends. Focus on, now will you focus on securing your future? They knew their time was now and they went for it. They knew their time was then at that time and they went for it. So I tell myself, every daddy, your time is now and be focused. When you lose focus, you lose it all. But when you stay focused on your goal, you go for it. And God gives you the courage. God gives you the stamina. God gives you the favor. And I pray that the Lord grants his favor upon his servants that they get what they want in this life. These girls got what they wanted in their life. And when Moses did what God instructed him, and I pick this with both hands, God being my helper, pick it. God being your helper that you remain focused and get it in the due time that God has preparing for you. Now, friends, one other thing that actually I pick from these girls is that they need to play small on issues concerning their destiny. There are some people who just play with their destiny. They take it for granted. They just go about. Now, listen to me. These girls need to downplay 
their destiny issues. They stepped up. They rose up. So your destiny is for you, waiting for you. Be bold. Arise and shine. So says Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And I praise God for these girls. Arise and shine, for your light has come. And so these girls did downplay. I pray to God that I will not downplay my destiny. That I will not downplay that I will not play small when it is due me. That I will stand and trust God for what he has prepared for me. Stand and trust God for what he has planned, what he has prepared for you, my brother, my sister. And like these girls, their destiny was waiting for them. It was only them to actually to arise to the occasion. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And their light has come indeed. And that's why they went to Moses and said, Moses, judge, prophet, it's our time now. And so this, it is something that actually you you need to take very, very seriously. And now one other thing, because I said that we learn them, we read these lessons, we read these portions, and we pick lessons from them. And now these are some of the things that have helped me individually, personally. And maybe they could be helping someone out there to arise and shine. Now one other thing that believe that the promises of God applies to you as a person. And this is critical, whether you're a girl, whether you're a boy, whether you're young or old, they apply to you as a person. But they were, you know, these girls knew this very, very much. And remember, they were still in the desert. They were not yet in the promised land, but they knew that the promises were for them. And so they were forward looking. They came claiming what was theirs in anticipation that the land would be conquered. Praise the Lord. They were in the desert. They knew that actually as we go, God knows it, and God will do something great, that the land will be defeated, that the Canaanites will be defeated, the Philistines, the Gagashites, the, Heb the Jebusites, the, name them, all of them that will be defeated, the land will be there, and they focused on their future. Now, I was talking about the past, talking about the present, talking about the future, now, sometimes the, the past holds on to you, but tell the past and say, past, I survived you. Past, I survived you. Then you tell the present, the present that I'm here for you. I'm facing you, present, I'm facing you, and these people face their present. And now tell the future, that future, I am coming for you. Pray the Lord. And so that these girls knew that actually they were coming for their future. Now, friends, they looked forward and so Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 talks about faith and now that faith is confidence in what we hope for, praise the Lord, and assurance about what we do not see. And these girls give us a point here. Hebrews 11 1, confidence in what we hope for. And now this time, friends, as we wind up our episodes here, this one, that actually we need to be forward looking. Zerophah had his daughters saw themselves in the future. I see myself in the future. I proclaim seeing myself in the future. Proclaim seeing yourself in the future. These girls proclaimed seeing themselves in the future because they knew the land was going to be defeated and they were going to get their portion of scripture, of, of land. And this is important. So see yourself occupying something. I see myself occupying my land my possession and so they pursued it to the very end this is a point that i'm also making one other lesson is they pursued it to the very end making reference to moses god had commanded moses to do that and the girls believed god for the land so it's it's important that we pick our lessons from here don't just stand and look act these girls acted Find people who will help, who will be helpful. Don't sit back. Go look for people who are helpful. Is it land issues? Is it money issues? Is it education? Is, are they job issues? If you are not able to access that job, I mean, here, look for people that are going to be helpful. These girls knew where to go. They went to Moses, pray the Lord. Now, this is important for me. Make friends. Make friends, 
who matter now you know look get people that are of value and speak to them and you know disclose your your this your grievances to them disclose your challenges to them these girls rent to mothers they never rent to nobodies they rent where there is influence i pick this in the name of jesus christ and may you pick it that actually this is important now finally what was done to the daughters of Zerophahad has never happened anywhere they had not this was the first of its kind never done anywhere I, they they did point to anything else but they knew what they needed they knew what they wanted so god is doing it not out of pity or honor for the, but he honored their right their unwavering faith and them their honor now i pray for you that you'll have unwavering faith that it earns you what is due you they exhibited ability to manage their father's property now many times this is one of the points this is one of the issues that when you exhibit inability when you ex when you exhibit mediocrity you suffer but the girls come forward and i pick these lessons very very much and i pray that god will answer our prayer that you stand out your blessing will make will leave people talking referring to it these girls got reference speaking about it don't feel helpless feel empowered through faith and god our father he has a prayer and so friends i praise god for these girls of zero and you know they they left a lesson for us a lesson for me a lesson for you and may god bless you and watch over you and so that your blessing will leave with people talking and may god keep you and bless you and his abundant favor rests upon us in the name of jesus christ our lord amen <music>